Every good superhero out there comes with an iconic rogues gallery of their own. A cast of foes who range from the weird and wonderful to the wild and wicked. Ben Tennyson is certainly no exception to this rule, and I would argue that some of the villains found within his rogues gallery are actually some of the best characters throughout the entire franchise. Just the mere mention of Vilgax has fans flashing back to times when the tentacled tyrant dominated every scene he was in, feeling the show with his truly selfish and unforgivable evil. So anyway, Ben, I, I have to go. Agrigor rose to popularity despite only having a single season of content to his name because of his design, powers, and charisma winning over the hearts of the fandom. You so fucking precious when you smile. And then there's characters like Charmcaster, who, um... I, I, I think we all know what the fans like about Charmcaster. But then, even amongst all these high-class supervillains, there is one who is often either adored or overlooked, with no real in-between. I am, of course, referring to Dr. Aloysius James Animo, my hero, one's justice, two, my favorite Ben 10 villain of all time. Today, we're going to be discussing just why Dr. Animo is so darn great. But before that, I just want to say that if you go on to enjoy this video, please consider checking out my full playlist of Ben 10 discussion videos, as well as hitting that subscribe button. And now, without further ado, let's get right into it. It's hero time! You're overdue for a visit from Dr. Animo! First of all, we should acknowledge the fact that Dr. Animo was actually Ben Tennyson's first ever villain, dating all the way back to the franchise's first episode, Washington, B.C. I think Animo being Ben's longest-running villain is such a brilliant idea, because thematically it makes perfect sense. Ben Tennyson wields technology that grants him the power to transform into genetically optimal alien lifeforms, while Dr. Animo uses technology that allows him to create genetically superior animals. These two characters are essentially always facing off in a battle of aliens versus earthlings, and I think that thematically this is such a brilliant, brilliant design touch. I don't think a lot of people ever actually stop to think about just how intelligent Dr. Animo really is, because I would even wager that he's actually the smartest man on the entire planet, and here's why. With technology made from various pieces of junk that he came across over the years, Dr. Animo has been able to perform the following feats. He was able to bring back the dinosaurs on not one, but on two occasions, once from a direct genetic sample and another time through genetically engineering chickens, who are the closest modern relatives of dinosaurs. This means that both Azimuth's Omnitrix and Animo's junk technology is capable of reviving extinct species. He was able to literally harness the power of the Omnitrix in order to power his mutant ray meaning that he not only possesses the ability to understand level 20 technology like the Omnitrix, but also modify it. And while you could argue that Ben also knows how to use level 20 technology because he literally uses the Omnitrix, you have to remember that an intuitive interface is a lot easier to grasp than what actually goes into the technology. After all, just because you can use a computer doesn't mean you know how it works or what it's made up of. He was able to harness and splice Splix and DNA into Earth native life in a matter of hours, or maybe even just a matter of minutes on one occasion. Which is impressive on two levels, because genetically engineering wildly different species together is already very, very hard to do, even by the modern science of 2024. And when you consider that a split tool is literally an alien from another planet entirely, getting this DNA to produce a viable life form in such a short span of time is nothing short of a miracle. Especially when you consider that he put the DNA of multiple alien life forms together. Which would potentially be even harder to do, because Dr. Animo would have absolutely zero idea of the biology and genetics of either species when going into it. When you remember that the Omnitrix being able to splice DNA was a much later upgrade, this could potentially mean that Animo figured it out before Asthma. And no, the glitch that caused fusions doesn't count because obviously that's a glitch, that was an intended design. He managed to essentially speed up and control the process of evolution on numerous occasions, something arguably on par with the Ultimatrix's evolution simulation, meaning that once again, Animo beat Asthma to the punch. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? He mastered human genetics and managed to splice human and alien DNA with ease, as well as combine human DNA, animal DNA, and cybernetics to essentially achieve immortality, or at the very least prolong his lifespan by a good few decades longer. I mean, he should reasonably be dead by here, he was already old. In fact, the ability to combine human and alien DNA may have even been the precursor to Ultimate Ben's ability to wield alien powers without his physical form undergoing much change, which would mean, again, Animo got there before asthma. Though, of course, this is only a personal headcanon and not an actual fact of the franchise, so, I mean, take it or leave it there. He managed to conquer, at the very least, a significant portion of another dimension. Meaning that not only is Animo outperforming Azmuth, but also Vilgax. Vilgax is out here conquering worlds, meanwhile Animo is literally conquering an entire dimension designed to be an inescapable prison. 
similar to the last point, he was able to learn the behaviors of the Null Guardians, and also, if I remember correctly, some Null Void Vulpermancers, and bring them under his control. And while this could have potentially took him an entire five years to do, depending on when he actually went to the Null Void in the first place, that's still very impressive. Because studying hostile alien behavior in a place like the Null Void is probably a lot harder than just sitting in your garden and hovering a magnifying glass over an ant. What the fuck is that? He invented mind control technology, he invented time travel technology, and he actually rocks the green skin look. And if all of this isn't impressive enough already, you have to consider that Dr. Animo has been pulling off feats like this since 2005. Technology back then, while still impressive, isn't really anywhere near what we get nowadays. When you consider all of these feats, it's honestly not that hard to imagine Animo being able to do practically anything. And that makes an absolutely fantastic villain. Animo is a character who steals the show whenever he appears with his wonderful voice performance by Dwight Schultz. We voiced him across every entry in the Ben 10 franchise, which I think therefore makes Dr. Animo the only character who would appear in every series and have the same voice actor throughout each of them. So, I mean, I might be missing one, like maybe one of the aliens has the same voice throughout, but that's pretty impressive. Because of the vast scope of his technological prowess and intelligence, pretty much anything Animo sets his mind to is something that he could reasonably achieve. Which means that every time he's brought back, no matter what technology he pulls out of his ass, it doesn't feel like just a gimmick slap on to make him more interesting. Anything Animo builds, you just kind of sit there and think, yeah, fair enough, Animo could do that. Which means that when you boil it down, this relationship is one between a man who can become thousands of aliens, and a man who can invent thousands of machines. Which is, at least to me, an absolutely fantastic dynamic that never ceases to be interesting. Dr. Animo's suddenly buff physique and seemingly random new superpowers that he acquired during his time as Devoid could even be explained in-universe and not just as an art style change. When you consider everything else that this man has accomplished, is it so hard to believe that he could just genetically modify himself in order to be more fit and healthy, get rid of some of those old wrinkles and grant himself superpowers through his technological tampering? Personally, I don't see why not. He's a master of biology anyway. On top of that, let's all be completely honest with ourselves, Animo could have invented the Nematrix if he wanted to. Psychobos doesn't have shit on Aloysius here. I'm sorry, but it's no contest. Hell, even Ben thinks that Animo could have been the one behind the Nematrix. And seeing as he's the one who's actually experienced the scope of what Animo can do, both in adventures on and off screen, then I don't see any evidence that suggests otherwise. Overall, Dr. Animo is an absolutely wonderful villain, taking the mad scientist trope to its utter nth degree, while still somehow remaining grounded in his character despite his ability to continuously one-up himself in terms of his own technological achievements. But with all of that said, that's about all I have to say with this video. Please feel free to leave your thoughts and theories in the comments below, and if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe. I do apologize for my voice in this video, I'm recovering from a horrendously sore throat and a cold, but I've spent the last few days bedridden just wishing that I could make a new video, so as soon as my throat healed even this much, I got straight back to work, so thank you so much for watching, and now let's move into our usual post-video rituals. So, first of all, a big shout out to our channels Thunderbeast, Riverjoy, Middle Muir, Victor Matusik, and Charscream AA. If you want to help support the channel so I can make more videos like this, please consider becoming a channel member and or donating to my PayPal, links in the description. Now let's move into last video's poll, where I asked you guys if you would rather own the Proto Truck, Kevin's Car, the Rush Bucket 1, or Ship. With 1,639 total votes, 11% of you said the Proto Truck, 44% of you said Kevin's Car, 20% of you said the Rush Bucket 1, and 26% of you said Ship. Now I'm not surprised in the least that Kevin's Car won due to how versatile, iconic, and cool it is, but personally, I'm a huge fan of the Proto Truck. While itself it isn't really the coolest vehicle, the fact that it turns into a literal spaceship is awesome, and would be amazing for touring the stars whenever I want it. So now, let's give a big shout out to everyone who correctly guessed that I chose the Proto Truck. So, big shout out to Dwight Norton3398 and Springo Woey. And Springo Woey? Springo Owey. Forgive. I don't. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. I left a comment before saying that I pronounced it wrong and I still don't know. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> but congratulations for getting it correct, you two. Now, before moving on to this video's poll, I actually have some more shout outs to make. In my last Ben 10 discussion video, I put a hidden message that said to leave the word Onion. in the comments. Now, let's give a shout out to everyone who saw that and left a comment. So, big shout out to Mr. Nobody4529, Jema F3, Tim's Dumb Name, Anne Marie VM, Carlos Vicente9856, Aiden is too graphic, user HW3WY6WP9S, Red Knight39, Drauks2042, Blacksmith679, Linear Hosino 2086, Double XE, Vault N95, and Dude Blade X. Well done for having sharp eyes there, everyone. And now let's play one on for each person who left a comment saying, on
And I think I'm actually gonna make this a tradition as well from now on, so that everyone watching my videos has two chances to end up getting a shout out at the end of a video. So I have left another hidden word somewhere in this video. If you see it, comment it down below in order to get a shout out in my next discussion video. Now let's finish things off by moving into this video's poll. Which of the Halloween alien trio is your favorite? Frankenstrike, Blitzwolfer, or Snero? Leave a comment down below or on the poll guessing which one I like the most for a chance to get a shout out in my next discussion video. And with that, I'll be seeing you all next time, hopefully less ill. <laughs> Adios, fellow heroes.